All right, so for this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by dividing both sides by x to the power of 2. So then these two cancel out, and now I'll be left with x to the power of x over x to the power of 2 is equal to 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So in this case, x to the power of x over x to the power of 2, can we write that as x to the power of x minus 2? And this is equal to 1. Now, if I take the natural log, or ln, on both sides, I get ln x to the power of x minus 2 is equal to ln 1. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can actually move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x minus 2, I can move x minus 2 to the front. So that's going to equal x minus 2 times ln x, which is equal to ln 1. Now ln 1 is simply equal to 0. So now I have x minus 2 times ln x is equal to 0. So this actually gives me two equations. I have x minus 2 is equal to 0, and I also have ln x is equal to 0. So for x minus 2 equals 0, all I have to do is add 2 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 2. So this is one solution of x. Now for ln x equals 0, I'm actually going to take e to the power of both sides. So now I have e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of 0. Now e and ln these two simply cancel out. So for my left-hand side, all I'm simply left with is x is equal to e to the power of 0 is 1 because anything to the power of 0 is 1. So I have x equals 1. So these are my two solutions. So now to check, I had x to the power of x is equal to x to the power of 2. If x equals 2, I have 2 to the power of 2 equals 2 to the power of 2. And 4 equals 4, so this is right. So x equals 2 is right. Now if x equals 1, I have 1 to the power of 1 equals 1 to the power of 2, 1 to the power of 1 is 1, 1 to the power of 2 is 1, so this is right as well. Alright, so in this problem, I have 5 to the power of 12 times 4 to the power of 5. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite 4 here as 2 to the power of 2. So now I have 5 to the power of 12 times 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 5. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 5, that's equal to 2 to the power of 10. So now I have 5 to the power of 12 times 2 to the power of 10. Now, 12 here, I can rewrite as 2 plus 10. So now I have 5 to the power of 2 plus 10 times 2 to the power of 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is simply equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 5 to the power of 2 plus 10, I can simply rewrite that as 5 to the power of 2 times 5 to the power of 10. Now I have this times 2 to the power of 10. So now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times b to the power of m, this is equal to a times b to the power of m. So in this case, I have 5 to the power of 10 times 2 to the power of 10. 
and that's going to equal 5 times 2 to the power of 10. So 5 times 2 is simply equal to 10. So now I have 5 to the power of 2 times 10 to the power of 10. Now, 5 to the power of 2, that's equal to 25. So now I have 25 times 10 to the power of 10. And 25, that's the same thing as 2.5 times 10. So I have 2.5 times 10 times 10 to the power of 10. And 10 times 10 to the power of 10. Well, 10, that's the same thing as 10 to the power of 1. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, that's equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 10 to the power of 1 times 10 to the power of 10, that's going to equal 10 to the power of 11. So I have 2.5 times 10 to the power of 11. So that's my answer in scientific notation form. All right, so in this problem, I have x is equal to x over 3. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by subtracting x over 3 on both sides. So now, these two are going to cancel out, and I'm going to be left with x minus x over 3 is equal to 0. Now, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 3. So now, for my right-hand side, 0 times 3 is simply 0. For my left-hand side, I'm going to simply distribute the 3. 3 times x, that's going to be 3x. And 3 times negative x over 3, the 3 simply cancel out. So I'll simply be just left with negative x. So now, 3x minus x, that's simply equal to 2x. So I have 2x is equal to 0. Now if I divide both sides by 2, these two cancel out. And I'll be left with x is equal to 0 divided by 2, which is 0. So now to check, let me actually go ahead and take all this off. So before we check, let me actually show you guys a different method of solving this. Now, before we subtract x over 3 on both sides, this time, instead, I'm simply just going to start by multiplying both sides by 3. So now I have 3 times x is equal to 3 times x over 3. 3 times x is simply 3x. And 3 times x over 3, the 3 simply cancel out, so I'll simply be left with x. Now, I'm going to go ahead and subtract x on both sides. x and negative x, these two cancel out, and 3x minus x is 2x, so I have 2x is 0. And if I divide both sides by 2, I get x equals 0. So that's two ways of solving this problem. So now, to check, first start with x is equal to x over 3. Now, x is equal to 0, so I have 0 is equal to 0 over 3. 0, now I have 0 is equal to 0 divided by 3 is simply 0. So 0 equals 0, meaning my solution is right. 